Hi, I'm Jason Gorbin for ThatShelf.com, and we're here to look at Kraft Records' release, Relaxing with the Miles Davis Quintet. Big shelf. So, this is a, one of the latest uh, uh, releases from uh, Kraft Records as part of their, essentially the equivalent of a one-step series. Um, uh, Mobile Fidelity has been... Uh, uh, doing it. Uh, it's similarly, it's pressed at RTI. It, it eschews the sort of um, extra step of going from a stamper to, uh, uh, from a father to a mother to a stamper and um, duplicating is taking sort of two um, presses out of the equation um, and it's pressed on the same similar um, super vinyl. So for all intents and purposes, it's pressed at the same plant. Um, it is using the same process. It's just a different record label and so you get different titles. This is the first that um, was of interest to me. Um, they're first in the series. Uh, there's a Coltrane and there's another record. Um, uh, you'll forgive me, I forgot uh, who it was. Regardless, um, there, I think there was a thousand copies and they sold out almost instantaneously. This was um, uh, many more thousand, um, uh, plus this Miles Davis. Now this is an era of Miles Davis um, um, uh, with uh, his sort of 50s quintet, which I tend to not listen to. Um, I really kind of start at kind of blue. I, I go back to La Bertha Cool and stuff like that. Um, but I, I very much sort of start up with Bertha Cool and then get into the sort of late um, 60s stuff and early 70s. And that's really my sweet spot where he really is, you know, chasing, instead of chasing the sort of post-bop vibe, he's chasing Sly the Family Stone. And he's uh, uh, and all the, all the children of the Miles Davis band that came out, the Herbie Hancocks, the... Um, the Jones Howanels, the um, uh, you know, people like uh, John McLaugh McLaughlin or McLaughlin uh, and my Vishnu Orchestra, Weather Report, all of that stuff that came directly out of that sort of um, orbit of Miles Davis. So I'm actually really excited to actually listen to this. I've obviously heard the album um, a few times, but I've never sort of sat down and truly listened to it as a sort of experience. I'm also intrigued um, to see sort of how this plays out. Um, the way that um, it works, um, it's sort of hard to see with all this uh, shininess, but there's a Kraft Records label. There is a, a pressed uh, number. I have number 4488, again, I think out of 5,000, um, somewhere around there, certainly more than 4,488. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, um, it is it's a much thinner uh, box than um, some of their usual box sets, but more importantly, it feels like um, just a good sturdy outer. Um, when when I open this up, I'll try to open it up carefully and see how it works inside without cutting. Uh, there's a ribbon here which actually allows you to pull it out, sort of like you know a hardcover book. I mean, which is always a nice way of. Um, of, of thinking about these uh, sets of, uh, you know, you're used to buying paperback stuff, but if you want the hardcover, you want the version uh, that's going to sort of uh, stay with you, um, the ultimate, uh, this is this is what we're looking at. Try to get this out here without too much drama. Pulling the string, as it were, didn't work quite as well as I wanted. Uh, so you can see there's this little stringy thing that I presume I pull and, and it should come out, but of course isn't working the way that we want it to. But that's okay, because also in here we have documentation. So yeah, certainly tight and doing its thing. And I think that's it. Yeah, so there's there's the string, which should sort of, now when I put it back in, I should be able to pull the string in and uh, have the stuff come out without doing the shaky stuff. <laughs> we'll see how that all plays out. Um, so the number, again, is on the outside of the box. It doesn't seem that it'll be on the record itself. Um, and on the record itself, you know, it looks like a pretty decent, uh, jacket, certainly not crazy heavy duty. Um, there we have the, the prestige, uh, label moniker. Um, but the, yeah, this is sort of a normal looking record. If it wasn't for that outer box, it certainly wouldn't look any different, um, than, uh, most, uh, sort of prestige, let's call them mid budget pressings. This is not one of those, um, you know, it's not a gatefold when it wasn't a gatefold before. It looks like a decent sized cardboard box and, um, um, you got a cardboard sleeve and nothing, um, more special than that. Same thing on the inside. Um, you can see it's nice, body line sleeve, it's fine, but it's not one of the, um, 
uh, the rice paper sleeve, something like what QRP does, what MoFi does with their one steps, um, and what Analog Productions does when they do their UHQR. But, you know, that doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's going to go to a new sleeve anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's just it's nice when it's actually shipped in the sleeve that's going to end up being. But what I can see, I don't know how well you can probably see me through here, probably not very well, but it's definitely um, the, the translucent um record compound that we're used to there's some chemical formulation but who are we kidding we'll just call this um super vinyl um like moel fidelli does as opposed to clarity vinyl which is what the the clear stuff that uhqr um modern analog productions uses this is the same one steppy stuff and it's interesting we just did um a video um just before this in rolling stones about the sort of um um, some of the smokiness that you get on, um, on surface layer. It's, 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 it's almost like somebody spilled coffee on it. Again, it doesn't affect sound usually, um, but there's definitely um, some, some a little bit, and it'll be very hard to actually show this on camera, but there's, there's you know, it's not pristine. It doesn't look as perfect as you would hope. Um, but nonetheless, it's all about how it plays. You can see I'm already getting hairs on this, which is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> the joy of having long hair. Um, so this will get cleaned. But nonetheless, it looks like a reasonably flat presentation. And it. I look forward to hearing how it actually sounds. So if I put it back in the sleeve, what else do I get? Well, I get, you know, again, pretty flimsy. Nothing particularly spectacular. Again, it's got to fit in the box. So I kind of really like the outside box. It's not taking up a lot of space there, but it's also, you know, rather than being sort of cardboard, it's, you know, just relatively flimsy paper. But inside you do get, uh, again, a bunch of verbiage, which is always uh, uh, welcome, and a photo of the master tape. So there we are. Um, a very quick look at, um, and, you know, the lovely prestige uh, replication label there. So there's a look um, I look forward to relaxing with uh, Miles Davis and his quintet. Um, the Craft Records um, uh, One Step release. Um, uh, thanks so much for watching. Please let us know in the comments if you managed to pick up a copy of this and what you think of it. How, you, how it compares and contrasts to other sort of releases of this record. And whether or not uh, I was silly or... Um, uh, made a good call about actually picking up this version over, let's say, first pressing, maybe, um, which is, you know, uh, unobtainium for most people, or even one of the newer releases. There's a bunch of prestige stuff coming out. So whether or not I sort of jumped the gun on doing this in Super Vinyl, whether that was such a good idea to do. With Miles, I'm like, whatever, it's Miles. I'll, I'll take the leap. Thanks so much. Again, I'm Jason Gore for ThatShelf.com. Uh, please subscribe, follow us on social media, and we will see you next video. All the best.